This is a fish story, but it's not about the one that got away. It's about the one that came here and came to stay. Nobody really knows how it happened. There are a lot of theories. Some think it started back in 92 with Hurricane Andrew. Legend has it that a handful of aquarium fish were washed out to sea. Nobody gave it much thought at the time. Nobody really cared except maybe their owners. After all, it was a beautiful and exotic fish, prized by collectors the world over. Miraculously, some of these little fish survived. They began to feed and grow and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply from just a handful to millions. Meet Taroy volatans, otherwise known as the lionfish. Its venomous spines make it a deadly meal for any would-be predator and the female lays 30,000 eggs every four days during the mating season. While feeding, their stomachs can expand by a factor of 30 and they eat just about anything. Crab, lobster, snapper, grouper, shrimp, and over 50 other fish species. With no natural hunter except man, their numbers may exceed a thousand per acre in some areas. Already, the second most populous species along the Atlantic coast, they continue to spread like wildfire, decimating native fish stocks. Fragile ecosystems are at risk from their ravenous consumption of herbivorous fish that are crucial to the maintenance of coral reefs. Already stressed by pollution and global warming, the lionfish could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. If all this wasn't bad enough, its venomous sting is excruciating and can lead to serious medical complications. Every year, more and more people are being hospitalized, including tourists. Hotels, restaurants, retail stores, game fishing and diving could all suffer. Over 60 million people are employed in the tourist industry in the countries affected by this plague, and tourism accounts for a large percentage of GDP throughout the entire region. The lionfish has the potential to seriously damage the commercial fishing industry. It will also have an adverse effect on tourism. As always, those who will suffer most are the poor, particularly in countries that have issues with chronic unemployment and poverty. Fishing is an important component of the economy and provides a vital source of protein to millions. So, what to do about the lionfish? There is good news. They're delicious, nutritious, and perfectly safe to eat. Our company, Traditional Fisheries, has already harvested tons of them. We partner with community-based fishing cooperatives in Quintana Roo, Mexico to rid the Caribbean of this menace and help indigenous fisher folk who have seen their usual catches severely depleted. Our methods are non-invasive and sustainable, and we pay our fishermen above the market rate. Public awareness of this problem is very important, and we're getting the message out, in print and on TV. The following is an excerpt from Dan Rather Reports on HDNet. But what distinguishes Puerto Morelos from any of the dozens of other fishing villages along the Caribbean is that this one is home to the only commercial lionfish fishery in the world. At least that's the sales pitch of David Johnson, a mild-mattered man from Minnesota who decided to tackle the lionfish problem. Many people from politicians to ecologists have written, we've got to eat this fish, we've got to get this fish off the reef. And lots has been written, but very little has been done. And I'm proud to say that I'm the one who's done something. Johnson, a lifelong fisherman, has a special connection to this part of the world. He spent seven years living in Mexico and even met his wife here. I read an article last uh, November and it was called Eat for the Ecosystem. And the light bulb went on and I said, I'm one of the people who can actually provide this fish. These fishermen are tough as nails. They are as tough a guys as you're going to run into worldwide. And it was a challenge to them. And because they're so macho and so tough, they said, yeah, you're going to pay us for it? Let's go. We'll get them. And that was that. It was over. They went after them. 
Ramon's been fishing these waters for years. He and his fellow spear fishermen dive in pairs with a lookout on the surface. About a year and a half ago, he and his partners noticed a big change on the bottom of the sea. Son bajos someros bajos donde existía bastante pescado y en las partes de afuera donde había langosta había pescado y hay ahorita el pez león en en cantidades en muchos pez leones ya no hay el, el beso entonces se se retira porque pues, se come de todo si la 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 langosta tiene huevos la, el pez león se lo come As you can see from the film at traditional fisheries, we're passionate about lionfish. Perfectly safe to eat, they're delicious and nutritious, with a taste similar to snapper and grouper. They're also high in omega-3 fatty acids, and we've shipped them to fine restaurants across the mainland U.S. from our FDA-approved facility in Puerto Morelos, Mexico, with overnight delivery. To help increase public awareness, we recently partnered with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, in a lionfish banquet held at the Smithsonian as part of their Eat Lionfish campaign. And we're always experimenting with new methods of capture that can increase harvest and reduce risk to divers. Recently, we successfully field tested underwater vacuum technology off the coast of Quintana Roo and in the Florida Keys. There's an old Mexican proverb that goes, Never ask God to give you anything. Ask him to put you where things are. At Traditional Fisheries, we're fortunate to be involved in something so important, something that will benefit people and the environment. There's no doubt the lionfish poses a danger, but it also provides an opportunity.